Hey everyone, my name is Mariana Palacios and if you haven't seen any of my videos, welcome, this is a channel where I speak about how to play for ballet classes. Today I'm going to speak about a subject that I think many pianists playing for ballet classes are interested in, and is the waltz. We have in every class a waltz, at least one, and we always have this moment in the ballet class in the center where the dancers, they do the waltz pirouettes. Normally they place in the corner and they do it in diagonals. So it's a long exercise that requires to give variety and to play exactly the waltz that the teacher is asking. Some pianists told me that they find difficult how to feel motivated playing walls because they don't find so many styles. Sometimes when we think about walls, we only have one style of walls in mind. So today I'm going to give you all the examples that I used to play in ballet classes depending on the teacher, on the levels, on the style and on the ballet school. A waltz normally is in a 3-4 time signature. Maybe when you start to play for ballet classes, when a teacher asks you for a waltz, then if you come from a classical background, you think about maybe a Chopin waltz or an Strauss waltz, and actually it's something that you can play. Maybe you are thinking about this kind of waltz. Chopin has thousands of beautiful, beautiful waltzes that you can use. I have to say that I don't use them so much because I find them almost like an adage. For example, I think they need something that gives also more energy even in the second and the third beat that has more more rhythm inside this is very lineal very melancholic very legato okay so maybe another waltz that you are thinking another classical waltz from classical repertoire could be this one this has more uh, like a waltz feeling but still i find it very calm but it will work. Another classical one is uh, the waltz the, from the Spanish dance from Moskowski. There are also more classical repertoire with a lot of waltzes from, for example, Schubert. And speaking about classical waltzes, of course, we have to mention the waltzes from Johann Strauss. They are so popular and they go very, very, very well with ballet. What is characteristic on these waltzes is that the second tempo holds a little bit up. The waltzes that I play before are more pun chin chin, pun chin chin, pun chin chin. The Strauss waltzes have this pun chin chin, pun chin chin, pun chin chin that comes from the orchestra. When you listen to these waltzes with the orchestra, you can feel this, this tension to the second beat and holding a little bit the tempo. When you see a ballet teacher marking mm, pam, pam, mm, pam, pam, then you can play this kind of waltz because you will be able to hold in the second tempo and the dancers will feel comfortable because they see that you can manipulate a little bit the tempo and be with them in their movements. And also when they do the pirouette, maybe you can, you can hold a little bit more. And actually, I discovered another waltz from Mexico that has the same impulse.
So as you can see, it has the same, the same feeling. They have very beautiful melodies and you change, you know, maybe you are tired of playing Strauss or maybe you work all the time with the same group of, uh, of dancers. So then you can have another music style. Mazurkas are so common in the ballet class. Ballet teachers feel comfortable because they recognize the rhythm of the mazurka, which is tam para pam pim para pam pim param pam. So it has also a little bit of hole in the pam param pam tam tam pam pam param pam. So the ta tan tan is good for dancers because they have a, a place where they can catch, you know, the, the, the rhythm of the of the music. In general, uh, dancers recognize the rhythm of mazurka because they think about the mazurka from Coppelia. <laughs> Sometimes it happens that the ballet teachers sing this but very, very slow. And then you think like, we are going to destroy the music. But please don't take it personal. I think they do it because it's a reference that they have in mind. So it's a way for them to feel comfortable, I think. Okay, so sometimes they sing. If you play this, the class is going to, to, to die. It's going to, the energy is going to feel so down. So what you can do is to find another mazurka that has a slow energy and a slower tempo. Let's come back to Chopin. Chopin has thousands of very beautiful mazurkas and in a very slow and melancholic tempo. Another mazurka that I play sometimes when they need this calm energy but still they need the rhythm of the mazurka, it's one from Greek. So you know you can always uh, take what the teacher says and then bring it into, into a better musical idea. That's, that's your role, to find something that fits better the exercise. It's not easy, but it's the beautiful challenge that we have every day playing for ballet classes. Another kind of waltzes that we can play are from the classical ballets. So all the repertoire that you have, that you see is a waltz, very clear, then you can play it in the ballet class. I'm going to give you some examples. You can always manipulate a little bit the tempo, of course, and I think it's good to have from ballet repertoire waltzes that have this very legato melody with another that have more staccato melody and subdivided, like this one. So you can have a variety between the melodies and also the ballads. Spanish waltz is a term that dancers used. I'm from Spain and we don't have a Spanish waltz. We have thousands of different waltz in Spain. For me, first time that I hear Spanish waltz, I was like, uh, what should I play? So I'm going to give you some tips. When ballet teachers ask for a Spanish waltz, I think what they need is something that has this 
energy up, like, ding, 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 ding. you know, they imagine like, you know, in the, in the films, you know, when you have Spanish uh, music, everyone is like thinking about the castanets and someone moving the skirt. You can use this kind of, you know, this kind of thing. So it's a kind of fast waltz, but of course you can make it slower. I found a waltz from the zarzuelas. Zarzuela is like the operetas, but in, in, in Spain. I want to give you an example about a zarzuela because it's a slow waltz, it's kind of classical, maybe coming back to this Strauss waltz energy. So let's take a look. Another waltz that for me is very Spanish is the jota. In Spain, we have many different uh, kind of jotas depending on the region, but actually where I come from is uh, from Aragon. We have the Aragonés jota. <laughs> that we found many examples in, for example, Don Quixote, and we found it in, in different ballads because Petipa was in Spain, so he copied this, this kind of rhythm. And I think it's something that we have to have in mind when a teacher asks for a Spanish waltz. <laughs> Actually, I would like to show Spanish Jota. But this is very fast, so I don't think you will be able to use it for walls, pirouettes. It could be more for, for example, for seasons goes so well, it's right in the accent. Actually, I want to mention that Jonathan Steele has on his blog a very interesting post about this, analyzing different details about this. I will leave the link down below. Another kind of waltz that I love to play are the waltzes from South America. One typical is from Venezuela. Josu Galastegui, in his albums, he recorded a lot of Venezuelan waltzes. The typical thing is the left hand that does like this. So it has pum, kakam, pum, kakam, pum, kakam. You know, it's kind of one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. In South American music, we found a lot of these like two, 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 and three, three. Okay, so it gives this like, uh, like the rhythm is moving all the time and I love it. Sometimes it's not easy to play for the ballet class. You have to find the teacher that like this kind of rhythm. I'm going to show you some examples about these South American waltzes. I could play so many different waltzes, but I'm trying to, to give you some different musical styles for waltzes so you, you can research in another direction and maybe find more repertoire for your waltzes and you don't get bored or not motivated. Another kind could be like these jazzy waltzes from maybe from musical Broadway or jazzy waltzes from jazz standards.
of course, we have waltzes from, uh, from Disney, from TV movies that are so popular. Another kind of waltz that I discovered a few years ago, it was thanks to Kim Helway. He's a great, amazing pianist in Copenhagen. He spoke about the energy in the waltz, how you can give another energy that is not pun chin chin pun chin chin. And he showed that you can play, for example, this kind of piece with is not a waltz. It's not easy to play, you really need to study, but you see it has this kind of energy and it comes of course from, from the melody tam pam prearim pam 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 prearim pam pam. It's very very driven, but what I think what is important is here the left hand that you have. Yes, so pum cha cha pum cha cha. You can get some ideas also from there. There are some Spanish rhythms that have this left hand. So I also listened to classes of John Sweeney in London. He's amazing. He plays uh, a lot of this kind of a rhythm for waltzes and it gives an amazing energy. Another kind of waltz that I have discovered recently is the waltz that has a very fluid left hand. This kind of... I discovered this with my colleague here at Swiss National Ballet, Lee Schill. I know that some ballet teachers uh, love this kind of waltz. He's uh, always using modern harmonic progression or modern uh, songs, for example, Game of Thrones or pop songs. And, and it's nice because it kind of connect the class with a contemporary feeling, but also it has this driven energy, like go and go and go and go and never ends. So we don't play pun chin chin pun chin, that sometimes we are very tired or also dancers can be very tired of this waltz rhythm. So it's, it's really beautiful. It's, I, I find that, that it's difficult not to rush, that to keep the tempo a little bit back. But it's something to, to have on mind if you want to, to research different kind of waltzes. And up feeling and... Oy, that's it for today. I hope with all of these examples you can, you can find another ways to make richer your repertoire and that you enjoy more playing for waltz. Pirouettes. Also remember to have a conversation with a teacher. You know, sometimes we ask the teacher and if they know how to explain things in musical ways, that can be very helpful. And then you can get very good ideas. Remember that in my Instagram account, I post a lot of videos playing for classes, especially on my highlight stories. I have plenty of videos playing for ballet classes. And if you want to learn how to play for ballet classes from the beginning, I'm creating an online course. I leave the link down below so you can sign up and you will be the first to know more when the course is ready. You will help me a lot sharing these videos with other people or sharing them in your Facebook pages or Instagram. And then all of this material can get more visibility. That's all for today. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!